go on to the next one. All right, sorry, Holly. So no. this was on, <laughs> and, and I want you guys to know, your names aren't uh, under each course. So what we do at the University of Laverne, in Lafayette, I should say, in our college, is the full-time people are in charge of some of, uh, are in charge of group of groups of courses. So you can see the ones that Holly is in charge of here, right? These are ones Amy have, and then these are the ones I have. Now I want to say within that, because we're full time, um, we also have some of you that are course specialists, and I don't want to forget anybody. So. If you look under Holly's Education 353 is Sandy's course and Sandy's been teaching with us for a while and has designed that course and developed it. So she will do when she does trainings with new people, they will be with Holly and Sandy. Okay, um, Amy, do you have anybody else? I, and I don't know if I asked Renee on Mosquito, but Renee has been teaching with us for a long time and teaching the language and literacy class. So I'm hoping she will be our course specialist for 449. Um, and because we have all these different groups now and different modalities, um, Amy will organize that training and you know get you, get you guys together, get the three of you together, Renee, Jeanette, and Selena. And then these are my courses. Um, Liz is our course specialist for 445, because as you know, she, um, well, you may not know, this is a class for your administrative um, permit. And Liz is a director of an early childhood center. So it's a really nice fit. Um, uh, Brianne does our education 485 class, um, which is, you know, being an LMFT is perfect for this class because you talk about, um, well, I'll let you can talk more about what you talk about. But anyway, you're working with a lot of children with different traumas, and she will bring that up and talk about that. You also will do, the students do some social emotional work on themselves. And where are our I can't, oh, the, the, do I not have the um, special ed courses on here? You have it next to student teaching under Amy's course. Oh, okay. I don't know why that's that way, but Brittany Walsh is the um, course specialist for our um, two uh, special education courses. And Brittany's a little further away, so she's been teaching those all online. And like I said, our campus really wants us to bring some students back. So we're gonna try to offer it online so Brittany can teach it and then on our main campus. And I think Victoria is gonna start teaching that also. So um, Amy will arrange a training with all of you. And I just want you to know, we're going to add some of your names here right, to some other courses, and we will have that conversation. Okay, next. I was just going to say something, sorry. Um, sometimes the course may only run in the spring or in the fall. That's why we may shift you one in the fall, but a different topic in the spring type of thing. Just wanted to make yeah. that note. Yeah, and, and students are asking more and more for our classes to be in the summer, too, or during Jan term which is interesting because it's only four weeks, but um, so this kind of leads me into our program learning outcomes that um, Holly and Amy will touch on also, but I just want you to know um, our, all of our program learning outcomes, we have seven of them and you will see what they are, but th I want you to know that they are based on NAEYC standards. Um, they're based on the University of Laverne's baccalaureate goals. They're based on WASC um, and they are based on the brand new California Early Childhood Teacher Performance Expectations. So they all align very nicely. Um, the reason why I'm telling you that is because, so you kind of know the, what our foundation is for when we do assessments of students. And I think Holly or Amy is one of you were talking about that. So I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what's been happening. Oh, here's our PLOs of what's been happening in our program. Um, these are posted on um, our Child Development Central webpage, which we will show all of you. 
Um, new people, if you haven't received your Laverne um, ID yet, then you do not have access to this, um, but you will, you hopefully soon. I know HR is working on it, um, but these are our seven program learning outcomes. And um, Holly will go into them a little deeper um, and talk about how our assignments, our courses align with the different PLOs and what that means for you. And, and we will see what that means for all of you. Um, so I think I'm good. Do you guys have any questions about what's been happening in the program? Oh, wait, the only other thing I have to tell you that I forgot is, um, you know, we used to have all of our courses at our regional campuses and they were 10 week terms. Um, the University of Laverne has started um, a new calendar system where our semesters are 16 weeks. And within those semesters, we have um, eight week sessions. So that's why all of our courses have been um, switched from 10 weeks to eight, eight weeks and 16 weeks. So if it gets confusing, we will help you out. And we'll just tell you this, this one's gonna be 16 weeks. It's gonna be all online or face-to-face. -face. Um, and we'll say session one or session two. So session one being the first eight weeks, session two being the second. Trust me, we're all like trying to keep all of that straight. Yeah. All right, my turn to go into the policies and all that good stuff. Okay, so uh, Cindy was mentioning uh, Child Development Central. So I'll kind of start there and then show you where the documents will be. Okay, so here is my main page for Blackboard. Yours may look a little different depending if you have this little toggle button on or if you have this one on, and I just prefer to see pictures, so I do this one. Um, you might also not see Child Development Central right here, and that's because of these are my favorites, and then it just starts to go, it starts with, I think, it, it goes in alphabetical order, so it'll go with numbers, and then fall, and then spring, and then summer, and winter, etc. cetera. Um, so if you can't find it, you can always, you know, type some part of the word in the top because this happens all the time where it's like, okay, I can't find Child Development Central. That's the only one with that name for me. So it's going to pop up. So if it doesn't pop up, it means you're not added into that course yet. And again, that's something that we can work on. So Child Development Central is our kind of portal to keep documents uh, syllabi, I think Amy put fingerprint things of students. I mean, we have so many different things that are important for us as instructors here. And we have an October 26th training tab here on the left. And that is where we've been pulling uh, these documents from. So the agenda that Cindy's been going over, her PowerPoint, um, the program learning outcomes are just listed here separately. And then, um, do, should I show the key assessments here, Cindy? Okay, so here it's a PDF and I've set it up in Blackboard so that when I click it, it just opens in a new window, which is nice for students and for us. But this kind of breaks down what we have deemed as key assessments in our uh, uh, pool of courses. And so if you see, you know, one of these courses that you currently teach or that you may teach in the future, you definitely want to have this on your radar that, oh, okay, there's going to be maybe an extra step where students maybe are going to connect to that program learning outcome or connect to the baccalaureate goal or the TPE. And you can see at the bottom here that we have five key assessments. <clears throat> that's connected to task stream. And that's something that Amy's going to talk about. So um, I'll, I'll leave that there. And Amy, if you want me to pull this back up when you talk about task stream, I will. But we've kind of plotted out everything for you guys of where, you know, um, we find all of this aligns and what assignments would be a good assessment for us to pull from students and get more data on. So just wanted to share that from our main page. 
So what I was going to cover now was things like policies and resources and things that should be included in your syllabus. So I'm going to download that here and I'll go ahead and put it in the chat box. I'm hoping that it's not too big, but let's see, just so some of us like to have something that we and just a reminder, as soon as you get your um, Laverne ID from HR, send it to me um, and we will get you set up on Child Development Central. Okay, it said it was sent um, to all of you. So I'm hoping it was, and I'll go ahead and go over that. So this is a sample syllabi from my parenting course. Oh, sorry, no, this is related to what we were just looking at, sorry. Um, so this is when it comes to that point of ha you having a key assessment for your course, we have this document here where you can put a blurb in your syllabi saying, hey, this assignment that you're going to submit connects to this program learning outcome, this TPE. So we kind of just made this general format here that you can copy and paste and you can change the wording from here, right? So if I need to connect to Program Learning Outcome 2, I'm just gonna come down to Program Learning Outcome 2 and, sorry, I'm trying to enable my editing here, and copy and paste that into, and I'll just start here before all the other stuff. So, you know, copy and paste. You can have it be the same font if you want, change up here. So it's editable. Um, and again, depending on which program learning outcomes and which TPEs you're connecting to for those assignments. So again, those documents are gonna be important because you'll need to be able to access them. Okay, so I'm not gonna save that. I'm going to open my sample syllabus. Okay. And is this the right document for you guys in the chat box? It should be. I don't know why I opened the wrong one. Um, but it's always important, you know, for us to provide our information, learning outcomes, um, the course description. Here's an example of how I provide uh, for the students to let them know I'm going to be providing OER, open educational resources, rather than um, having to pay for a textbook. Uh, the suggested reading is always the APA manual, and this is not the right picture, which I realized on Monday, so I apologize. Uh, the new picture is colorful, and I forgot that I had to change that picture. Um, so here are the things that we find important for you to include in your syllabus. So these are more general university-type resources and policies. Their diversity statement, Laverne services, social justice incident reporting. Um, again, with each of these, it's straight from the university. So we copy and paste. It can be the same in all of your syllabi. I talk a little bit about, you know, they can reach out to Title IX or to campus safety. This is an anonymous link. So all of these links work. All the numbers have been updated uh, in the last year or two. So all of that should be correct. But if they feel that there was some kind of social, social justice incident, they can anonymously report by clicking on this link. We have some other um, resources through the university, such as the Center for Neurodiversity Learning and Wellness. So here's their contact information and academic accommodations. So I haven't had anyone reach out to me recently, but normally you'll get either a letter directly from accessibility services in your email, or you'll have a student reach out to you saying, hey, I receive accommodations from accessibility services and here are my accommodations. That's fine that the student has emailed me, but I do let them know, you know, I'm waiting for confirmation from accessibility services. And usually it's things like they can have double time on an exam, or I think that's been the only thing that's come up recently. Um, and really with this online environment and Blackboard, it tends to work really well for students. So I don't have too many accommodations, but just keep that in mind. You know, they do need to go through accessibility services. And one thing that I tell students when we go over the syllabus is that they will test you for free. You know, if you feel like 
at this point in your life, I've never really been tested, but I'm having, you know, issues with get, completing tasks, or I feel like it's educationally related, they can go and get assessed there at Accessibility Services. So these are still Laverne resources. The Academic Success Center is something I always point out because not only writing support, grammar, punctuation, all that, but they'll also provide APA support. They have online virtual appointments and face-to-face. -face. Um, and then we always include academic honesty and plagiarism because um, again, we want students turning in their own work um, on Monday, I just had a new class, so it was a time for me to talk about self-plagiarism, and Brianne and I are on the same page there because Brianne contacted me a few weeks ago and said, hey, was this an assignment turned into one of your classes? Because it doesn't make any sense in my class. And I opened it up and I recognized the student right away and the paper right away that they had written like a year before. So I have a conversation with students about how are you growing as a learner when you just turn in a paper that you did a year ago that has nothing to many times do with the content of this course, right? <laughs> so we want you to be doing your own work, but also moving forward as a, as a student and not just submitting old work, um, you know, growing from there. So if that comes up, you know, that's a good thing to, to have a discussion about. Another thing uh, I like to share is self-care resources. We have three of them. We have student health services, you know, so if they're feeling ill in any way, counseling and psychological services, and the Leo Food Pantry. So those are, you know, in their tuition dues and all of that. So students can reach out to those resources. Lastly is kind of within our courses, we like to talk about, um, yeah, typically these three areas of that it's an inclusive environment, that within the discussions and participation that everyone is able to have their personal identity respected, their point of view heard, um, you know, just having that discussion about how it may look face-to-face, -face, online, and or both, right? Because some of us do hybrid courses. So um, we just kind of talk about, you know, sometimes, especially like in my parenting class, we talk about culture, we talk about stereotypes, we talk about a lot of things that, you know, can bring up feelings in people. And so we talk about having it in an environment where we're able to have these discussions and be open and honest. Um, I also have a little task stream thing, and this is what Amy's going to go into next. So if you have a task stream requirement, it's good to have a blurb in your syllabus, letting students know that they need to have an account. Um, we provide them with a code and if their account is already established, but needs renewal, we also provide them with a renewal code that we get from someone, um, Julie Johnson, if you haven't interacted with her, she's the only person who's in charge of task streams. So um, we'll make sure to provide her information to all of you. But um, so specifically for, for parenting, key assessment four is the ethnography. So as you can see here, I have an updated program learning outcome for, and the four TPEs that they'll be connecting to. I also like this little, you know, highlighted area here. A final grade will not be issued until this assignment is uploaded to TaskStream. And that's not exactly correct. It's pretty much a failing grade will be submitted until you meet the TaskStream requirement, right? Because I don't know if any of you have never put it, have left out a grade, but I had someone calling me like, you did not submit a grade for the student. And I said, well, they didn't meet the requirements. You still have to put in a grade and then you can do a grade change later. And so I tell students, you know, I don't want to fail you, but this is a requirement for this course. So uh, usually they all get it done before the final grades come into play. Uh, lastly, we have some policies, right? Because we need them <laughs> for multiple reasons, things come up. So the first thing I wanted to point out was absences. In these eight week courses, one absence is huge. I feel like it's huge sometimes in a 16 week class, right? Again, depending on what you're covering that week and et cetera. 
So I, I try to stress to students how much we're doing in this short amount of time and how important it is to be there. So I've worded it differently. I think I've said like more than one absence will result in a failing grade or two absences will result in a failing grade um, because things come up and they'll disappear and then they come back wanting to continue and we're, you know, four weeks beyond that and that just can't happen. I, I, I think of it like work. If you just didn't show up to work, you'd probably be fired, right? If you don't communicate all of that. So I stress as we go through this part of the um, syllabus, communication is key. So I've just recently added this component because as you all know, with COVID and everything, illnesses have come up. Um, so I put, you know, if you're unable to complete due to an illness, please notify me promptly by email providing documentation, right? Otherwise, if it's not an illness or something that you want um, to be excused for, then I have an emergency policy where everybody kind of gets a free ticket for, you know, something coming up. Um, but I do tell them, you know, if more than two weeks pass with no communication with the instructor, students will be unable to continue in this class no matter, I mean, it's just too fast paced of a class for a student. Even and, and again, maybe someone would contact me on the first day of week three and depending on their circumstances. But again, I'm just trying to set out there that communicating with me is really important. These classes, you know, are many times asynchronous and they just keep going. So if you're not present and participating, you really fall far behind. Now you do not have to provide a something came up ticket in your class. It's just something that I came up with, I think during COVID kind of during that time and found that students appreciated it. It wasn't too big of a deal. And it kind of, you know, gave everybody something, some, you know, one task a week or turning in one assignment late. But sometimes I'll say, you know, certain assignments can't be turned in late. It's due week eight. I'm not accepting it, you know, after the very last day of our term. So you as the instructor get to, decide that, you know, is that something that you want to offer? Or maybe you offer extra credit or some other way on your um, Blackboard page, which is totally fine. This is another issue that um, came up for me in the last year. So I've added the student abs absences for athletics and other school sponsored events. I took it straight from our, I think it was in our faculty handbook because I was unaware. I had a student who missed class and then the week after notified me and said, well, I want to make up last week because I was at a soccer game. Well, if it was a scheduled game, then that means you knew about the game and we'd been in class already for like three or four weeks. So it was just something that ended up blowing up because I told her, oh, you could use this something came up ticket. She didn't think that was fair because she was a student athlete and we went back and forth. Well, the policy says they should contact their faculty member and provide a class excuse form. I don't know what this form, form is or looks like. I've never had a student provide it to me, but it should also be provided four weeks in advance. Now that's impossible if it's the second week of class and you know, right? I, I, I can take that into consideration, um, but they must notify before their absence in order to be provided makeup work. And it says that in our faculty handbook. Otherwise I say, you know, they can use their something came up ticket. The last thing here is late work. We've, as a program talked about, especially with these eight week classes, it's really difficult to allow a lot of late work. And then it starts to bleed into other courses where it's like, oh, well, my last instructor let me turn in anything, anytime, you know, late work. So we set a policy of a 20% deduction and if it's late and we'll accept it one week past the due date. Um, so again, that's been something that I think has worked pretty well for us. And yeah, that is our stuff there here. Just telling them again, Blackboard is important. They need to be able to access it. If they can't get into Blackboard, there's nothing you can do about it. They have to contact Blackboard and one of the higher ups in Blackboard was telling me that if they call rather than email, they'll be put on the top of the list. So mm -hmm. I always share that information with students. Lastly, you know, Safe Assign is a plagiarism tool that we use in Blackboard. You can just click a little box and it'll 
uh, send student assignments through a whole process of checking if it's plagiarized or not. Um, so that's something, you know, as we do course specific trainings, we can talk more about because some courses I use it and some I don't, but it is a tool available for you. Um, I, we always have these blurbs of like, they can send us emails from other accounts, but when we send out class emails, um, you know, it's going to come from their Laverne account. I teach a lot of classes, so I always ask them, please tell me what class you're in. Otherwise, I spend so much time because some of my classes are similar. So the assignments are so, you know, things like that. Uh, and then usually we have in here our course requirements and how they're being graded. So I just kind of provided that here in the sample for all of you. And I think that kind of covered everything. Let me pull up the agenda. Do you, Paul, can, you show, can you show your mm -hmm. syllabus again? Do you have the, the rubrics in the back? I don't. Oh, okay. I didn't include it there. Oh, this is just a sample. That okay. was just for the policies and stuff. Otherwise, I'm like, <laughs> then it was all my assignments. But yes, typically we put in all of our course assignment descriptions and the rubrics. And again, you know, so if you make a little change, you want to make sure to make that change in your syllabus before you put it into the next group. Um, but that way, everything, it's kind of like a contract, right, of everything that's going to be expected of them, including <clears throat> major assignments. So I think I covered everything in regard to all the policies. APA, um, just so you're aware, when we come back to Blackboard here, um, oh, here's the sample syllabus. I clicked on the wrong one. So here is seventh edition resources for all of you. You can download these, you can put them directly into your Blackboard pages, which is what I do for students. So here's a sample paper. It's nice because it's annotated with what should be on a title page. And this is for a student sample versus, I think it's a published a sample, mm -hmm. right? So some students get confused and follow <clears throat> that one, but no, we're following the student one. So it goes into headings and uh, citations. It's just, and uh, what's nice too, when you go to the reference page, you know, it goes into specifics about references and all that good stuff. So I provide this directly to students. Sometimes we go over it as an example. Sometimes uh, I do other activities. I also provided this online resource for all of you. It's just OWL at Purdue, which is a pretty standard go-to for people with APA. Um, but you can come down here and, you know, kind of choose what it is you want to look at. Is it um, in-text citations, reference list? You know, many times I'll see a student put something and I'm like, oh, I haven't seen that kind of resource in a few years. Let me look up like, is that right? And it, you know, they're all, because things change and memory, memorizing APA is, is not an easy um, part of teaching. Here's a video for students, and again, for us, but um, how to formulate an APA paper. So again, I provide all of those um, to students so that they're able to you know, navigate on their own um, with APA, but I also kind of embed it into class, especially if it's a requirement for one of our major assignments. All right, so that was my little APA spiel there. And that takes us to Amy. You want me to stop my share, Amy? Yes, please. Um, I always learn so much from Holly because she's so astute to all the details. Um, so Holly, I always have them call OIT. I hadn't heard to call directly to Blackboard. OIT can help them as well, but I didn't hear that piece too. So just OIT is our um, IT, you know, the technology support. Um, so there's always certain things that Holly brings up. And like, oh, good to know because we all do things differently. Yeah, because um, I tell students, if you can't get into Blackboard, contact Blackboard. If you're in Blackboard and there's supposed to be a link and you don't see it, contact me. And there yeah, and the fun thing is like, you know, we will do assignments or do, they open on Sunday and they're due by Sunday at 11.59. So you get the email at 11.59. 58, 57, 58 at night. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I can't log in. So I can't 
submit my assignment. <laughs> I'm glad you waited till 1157 <laughs> on Sunday night. Uh, let's think a little bit ahead. Um, but anyways, it's kind of funny. Usually they're like, I'm locked out. And then I think Holly had said one time, she says, um, you know, give me a screenshot that you're locked out, <laughs> you know, to validate it. You know, not that we don't believe them, but you know. I would say we're like, I want to help you. Show me what you're dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. So on um, my piece on the agenda is for task stream review. So, um, Cindy, I asked you in the chat if you still had your assess. Did you look at your assessment to see if you have something to be assessed? I do assessment? have one I could pull up. Okay. So in a minute, I'll, uh, we'll flip over to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, some of you will have a task stream assessment to do, which is our key assessment, and you will, um, you'll know that by your course specialist, but this, in that Child Development Central, this is one of the key pieces here, and down here at the bottom, you see key assessment, so the 350, and then what's 452 is parenting, we're starting to write people's name now. So that would be Victoria, 350, whoever's working with child psych with Holly, 451 is Brianne, and then I have it. And then um, Cindy and Holly have it for senior project. So not too many of you are affected by this, but it's just good to know if we flip you or put you into another class at, um, during a certain semester that this is always accessible for you. So you can see which which ones are needed there. Okay, so, I mean, I really rely on all those things. Um, so what I wanna show you, sorry, is this is my student teaching class. Don't pay attention to this because I dump a bunch of stuff in here, but then some student, and then <laughs> it's all my notes. But I usually put a, a task stream support tab down here and we'll go through, um, how to set up these tabs in Blackboard. Um, but I usually put this in here because they don't go to Child Development Central to look for information. And um, this is basically what they need to know. Um, creating the account is here. There's a screencast. So I'm tell I tell them, after you follow these support videos and you've tried, then contact me and let me know what's not working, right? Um, but I often they just want us to tell them instead of them doing it on their own. So this is set up for them to find all of the information. So there's a screencast and they, Holly, did you do this one? She may have done this one. Um, and then submitting the work. And here's the key part right here is um, the first time key code. If they don't have one, it's a general one. So like I said, not all of you will need to know this, but it's important to know where you can find it. This is what it looks like in my class. And then over here, and this is Child Development Central for all of you, you can always access this information down below right here. And you can you know, put these videos, that's what I had in there, it's just the link instead of showing the screen. Um, there's some information. And then for instructors, Holly put all this in here, for instructors, how to assess it. Oh, okay, we could use this. Cindy. Yeah, I there's... found that video and it was made by TaskStream. So I was like, oh, perfect. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, Cindy's will be live. So, <laughs> so then I want to show you um, where TaskStream is and they change this someday. At some point they change it to watermark, but I still type in TaskStream and I wanted to show you what it looked like. And then I'll switch my screen share to Cindy so she can, um, Oh, sorry. I already opened it somewhere. And I thought I closed it. Or you can continue and lock that. You just click the blue button there. Continue. You know, I can't there. see all of my bars up there. Just a second. Let me see if this is it. No. Mm -mm. See, no, I didn't think I had it all in there. That's oh. what I mean. It does that to me a lot of time too, just because I didn't log out or something. So it thinks that's that it's open. Um, well, I just go to Google and put it in here. And then I'm back at this page again. Um, basically, you, once the students have uploaded. Yeah, just click that blue button. Do you see the yeah. blue button? Yeah. Okay. So basically, once the students have uploaded their, their content, it'll, it'll show you that you have evaluations waiting. Um, and you know what? 
honestly, because I don't want to ask Holly 10 questions, I just click and click and click around if I don't know anything. <laughs> and then I call Holly or text her. And you left um, out too, you'll be sent an email, right? Saying, right. hey, this student submitted. So you can click from the email, but then you'll have to sign in if you're not already. But sometimes it'll just take you right to where you need to go, which is always right. nice. And you'll have your own system. Personally, I wait till everybody um, puts it up there just so I make sure and have a checklist. So I make sure everybody has been evaluated. But you will see these buttons and then we'll look at uh, Cindy's right now um, to show you how to assess. Okay, so Cindy. And, and then we're, all, we're also going to do, um, uh, can you see that? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're also going to have um, course specific trainings. So, and during those trainings, we can go over this right. in more detail because it doesn't um, pertain to everybody. So um, when you go to child development, these are the different ones that I have to assess. Let's just look, continue. Right, so I just finished teaching our infant toddler class education 451, and there's some here to assess. Um, so it's really easy. I mean, when you assess them, it just says evaluate. Uh, you can open their, um, their yeah, assignment here, download it, and then it also has the rubric attached. Um, uh, my internet's been really slow today, so I'm not going to have It's thinking about that. it. <laughs> yeah, but, it, and then it has the, um, it does have a rubric. So you could actually, what I do the last night, if, if, if their last assignment is a presentation and they've uploaded it to TaskStream, I'll open it while they're presenting and evaluate it right then, and then it's done. So that's kind of nice. Um, and, and you can also choose if you want students to see the evaluation or not, because this, this is for us. This is our assessment system, right? So if you want them to see it, you need to choose that on here. It's not gonna let me do that. Um, well, I was gonna say, I think from the main page, there's an easier way yeah, of just seeing what needs back. to be evaluated because I never go to that big list, but if you go- I always do. I don't know. Well, let me stop sharing, back. wait. But, you know, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, this is something I think we can go over more when we yes. do our trainings because yes. everybody's not going to need it. Right. We just wanted to show you what, you know, there's always these assessment processes to yep. go through. So this time you only have one. We used to have two different places where we had to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Thank we're streamlining that. And then the resources will always be in Child Development Central for you. So we wanted to move over. Some of you, you know, like we say, we, you've been teaching um, for a while and some of you are new at teaching and, you know, we're going to be doing hybrid classes. So even if you are face to face, you go through, you know, every other week of being off campus. Right. And sometimes I, you know, obviously the, a lot of these um, online platforms where people can connect um, that started during COVID and we just kind of like we're forced to, you know, push, get pushed into it. But obviously now it's very useful and I use it in my hybrid classes at different times. And so how many of you are familiar with Jamboard or Flipgrid? And then Zoom just started this whiteboard option. Jamboard. Okay. Flipgrid. Okay. You went to almost everybody. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'll show you really quick. And then, you know, the course specialists can do it as well. What I like about Flipgrid is it's face-to-face. -face. Well, it's recorded, but it's recording your face. And you can do, you can give them a discussion board um, prompt, but they don't have to write. Like I was, I knew everybody was getting so sick and tired of just writing journals or discussion boards during COVID. And we, we need to see each other and have some kind of connection. Um, so we used Flipgrid and I used Flipgrid and I just wanted them to speak to the prompt, right? And rather than, than type it out and, um, and then they can respond face-to-face -face recording with two other people. So I'll show you that really quick just to have a reference. Um, and, and these are both free programs. Right, yeah. So you know those, oh, it's not showing up on mine. 
<laughs> and if there's other programs you need, we can ask our um, OIT per people also, and they can upload things to your computer. Okay, so let me get this again and share my screen, hold on. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a, a one that we're doing live right now with my program, my other program. Um, this is the student side, what they see. And I tried to get over to my side to set up a new one, but you just kind of have to click through it. It is really user-friendly, um, but I put an attachment over here and then our virtual meeting is to watch the meditation. And then this is the question that we asked. So when students log in with their Laverne email and you can set all that up, um, they just add a response and then it's instantly going to record. Okay, and then they have to go and uh, comment on each other's page. So you can see there's two comments. Um, but it's just a different way to get engagement with students. And personally, I like it. And I like it during my hybrid classes um, on those off weeks. It's kind of weird this semester with, well, I guess it happens in spring break. But with fall break, with my student teaching class, we're not meeting for like three weeks or four weeks. It just happened that way with holidays. So I want them to still see each other and Flipgrid's a good way to do that. Um, and then the other one is Jamboard as many of you have seen. Okay, Susie, yes, Jamboard. Um, they can, that also can happen um, on their own. They can go to that link and you can put prompts on there and screens on there. And um, the good thing is, you know, a lot of the students are used to it now because of COVID, right? Um, if their professors have used it as well. And then, um, the whiteboard is like real time, but Holly said you could also do that prior to class. I haven't really played with whiteboard on Zoom, um, but you can see it down below on our screen. That's good live, right? I haven't done it for the recording. I yeah, and I'll, I'll show it here too when you're finished and show Go what ahead. you can. Like. Yeah. Um, real quick, I'll just show uh, a jam board. Um, so this is one that I did on Monday night and you can choose, you know, the background. I was having them set up groups. So uh, they just needed to come in and say which culture they were going to be choosing. Uh, but when you go to share, you want to make sure that it is selected um, that they can edit. So what it does is it'll say, usually I think it just says restricted. And then, so you click on it and you have to do people with the link. And then it just says viewer. So then I have to just click to editor. So that's something that, again, once you get used to that step and then you could just copy the link here. Um, but that would happen in my first Zoom classes, you know, students would be like, um, we can't click on anything. I can't edit anything. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's just something you want to um, be aware of. Now, what I'll do now is I'll just show you guys. So at the bottom, like, two over from my share screen option here in Zoom, I have a whiteboard option. And um, when I click on it, I see new whiteboard, which is what all of you probably would see. And then I've set up two different um, whiteboards to use in future classes. Uh, I'll just choose one of those so you can see. So I already put the prompt here. So provide your six characteristics. We play some game and they each get these uh, characteristics assigned to them. And then it shows me everybody up here who our participants are. And then if you guys want to kind of uh, play with it a little bit, you should be able to come and choose uh, a shape, a text box, a sticky note. Uh, I see sticky notes popping up, um, right? So uh, that's what I usually do the first Zoom class. If I have a Zoom class is we kind of just do, let's do a practice one and kind of see what we're doing, right? So you can you can actually write in there. Um, I don't know if you can, again, I, this will be my first time using it, but you could set up multiple pages. I wanted to like be able to put a picture on, but it doesn't do that. So that's where I kind of go to Jamboard if I want it more pretty, you know, but, um, and then like, I see people writing down below, but I don't know if I can like, I can't see what's up at the top. So I don't know if that's my view. Let me see if I close my participant window. I just move my scroll and I tab and it, and it goes up and down. Huh. I can okay. see, can you see the screen moving? 
Well, like whatever's mm-hmm. written at the top, I can't read the top of it. So this hi friends. Yeah, I can't see the whole oh, okay. top of it, but you can. Well, click on your screen and try and move your mouse up and down. Uh, and I'm on the pointer. It's just like creating a box when I do that. Oh, okay. oh but I have zoom in the bottom corner. I zoomed out. Can is it? Did it zoom out? <laughs> all of you. Okay. So now I'm yes. at sixty-seven percent zoom. So yes. this is another way, you know, to have real-time interaction where, like Amy said, you're not having them write another journal or you know just something different that they can uh, engage with. So. Um, The whiteboard, you wouldn't be able to set up on Blackboard, but the Flipgrid and the Jamboards can be pre-set up, embedded in your Blackboard page with links that can be done at any time. So so those are are useful programs. And I'll close the whiteboard here. The only thing I wanted to add to that is- Can I ask a quick question? So sorry, um, the Jamboard and the other one, I can't remember them. I'm not familiar with them, but are those all on Child Development Central as well? Just like the instructions on how to use them? Um, We don't really have instructions. And it's funny, I tried to look for just general instructions, but I think I put links in Blackboard. Let me check really I want she put links, but what I wanted to show you was how to get into Jamboard from your Google Drive. Like this is my mm-hmm. Google Drive right here. And you go up to new. And then it gives you these options and more. And then you go over here to Google Jamboard and click on that. There's, and there's, then go ahead. I was just gonna say there there might be a is there a little faster way. To go, go straight ahead. to Jamboard? Yeah. I just put Jamboard in Google and it takes me straight to. to yeah, you can do it that way too. Yeah, you're right. I just like it to stay in my um, in my drive. Yeah, you have to be signed in if you want it to yeah. save into right. your account. So that's right. where. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, right. that's the only reason why I did it. But um, but then, see, so you don't, there aren't really instructions so much as just this is literally what it opens to. Okay. And then that's what it does here is, you know, this is what Holly was showing you, the share tab. And really, you're just going to have to click around to set background, clear frame, things like that um, to a second slide. But literally, this is it opens to the platform. So it's there isn't any back. Yeah, and you can direct link it with that link into Blackboard. So students can just click there and they don't have to find it. But yeah, you might have to. Click into Jamboard um, and I'll, will you stop sharing real quick? I wanted yep, to show right the now. first time. Cause again, I did this in like a zoom meeting and I thought, oh great, I'll use it in my class. And so I went to Google and I was like, how the heck do I start a new, like it, it wasn't clear to me at first, but uh, just to show you guys real quick. Um, so these are all the jam boards that I've, I've set up over time, but this little new jam button in the bottom corner, that's where you start. And so it'll create a whole new, you know, jam for you where you can then title it. Um, and then you click on this Jamboard home and that'll take you back to your homepage with all of your jams. Like here's one where I gave a lot of um, introduction and it looks like students have started to. So um, I tell them like from the left tab, choose either a sticky note or a text box to write your response. The text box allows for more text and allows you to press enter. The sticky notes just have everything kind of as one and it'll only allow a certain amount of text. But as you can see, so they're starting to define certain cultural terms and they're doing it on their own time, but they need to have it done by Sunday. So. Holly, Holly, if you if you click on your back button um, to just go back out real quick. And, and over there by your picture, your profile, those nine little dots, I think that's really helpful for people to see that this is where all the Google apps are available. So like when we're talking about Google Sheets and Google Power Slides, Jamboard, you just passed it up. Um, yeah, the Jamboard awesome. is right there. And you can actually move these around. Like you can move things that you use more often. You can move them up to the top. Um, and you can move, yeah, you can kind of like move things around. So if you want to use, you know, your drive or um, things that you use a lot, like I sometimes will make slides in my class, um, like I did in the math class, I gave every student a slide and they watched each other put things on each slide. So we created like a whole 
um, slide in there, but um, it's just mm. kind of nice to know that as soon as you click on that Jamboard, all of your Jamboards like you just showed appear, and then that plus yeah. sign works from there. So not to say, Amy, that what your step isn't, but just oh, no, showing no, you like know, you know, Google. I know I was in my personal Gmail and yeah, I, have a yeah, meta, yeah, yeah. I have a professional Gmail and I can't get into both at the same yeah. time because it's through the university. And so I did it that way. But no, you're and right. I was just I was just going to add one more thing that is I think is really helpful. I never want to give anybody my personal Gmail account. So I created, my students call me Dr. Seuss. I created a for Dr. Seuss. I have friends that did Professor Buckley or Professor Blanchard at Gmail. Because if you start putting in and sharing these kinds of things with your personal, all of a sudden you're going to get spam and porn sites and all (laughs) kinds of other stuff coming to your personal Mm. Gmail. And you don't want that. So just create yourself something if it's not through the university. Right. And the students I, start emailing you there instead of in your faculty. Yes, and it's, like, it'll drive you that. nuts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So so that's why I have the four Dr. Sues. It's like simple. Nice. And nice. so we just have the basic links here. Again, you'll have to make sure you sign into Google or set up an account. Do you set up an account in Flipgrid? I'm assuming I haven't used Flipgrid, but yes, um, yes, it's, it's yeah. really user friendly. It's really simple to do. And then, like I said, whiteboard is in Zoom. So unless you have Zoom open, there's nothing that really I can link to. And you don't Um, have to do these things, but we just want to offer you some really basic things to get started. You know, some of you like who are going to be fully online all the time. It's just a nice way. And then, you you know, what I wanted to say is the... um, the paraprofessional groups, if we ever ask you to teach them, um, they're all over California, but they wanted to meet in real time. So these kinds of things to use while you're meeting with them in real time is really handy. And here in the portal, you have access to Zoom. Um, for instance, for I'm teaching paraprofessionals, you can go in and set up the link ahead of time and dates. And I don't know why it says I have no upcoming because it should show my upcoming stuff, which is weird. Um, like, am I in the right account? Maybe it thinks I'm in Google or something. Um, but your personal room is always there for you. You can set up, um, you can set up polls. I'm trying to see, see, like it tells you whiteboards here and and gives you more information about that. But usually I set up all my polls in here and we'll do that um, also through, through Zoom. Your Zoom link is in your quick links? Yeah, it's under faculty resources. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, so what else is going to be important for you here in the portal? And I think I've moved things around like my employee email and Blackboard. I don't know why I don't list them first. I just like them right there. And so I've moved them around. Um, But if you ever need, you know, the HR portal, that could be important. Office 365. Um, I just shared this with my students. Oh, the stupid duo thing. Um, They need to know this because they're going to get hit with this too. So if you get a student who says something like, oh, I don't have PowerPoint, you can say, yes, you do as a Laverne student. So I don't know if you guys ever done this, but it sends you a push to your phone and you have to accept it. Um, Yes. But I just showed them on Monday. I said, you have Office 365. And all of a sudden now my stuff is going slow on my end. So sorry about that. Um, but I told them again with these little hamburger menu here, which mine is taking forever. Um, you have PowerPoint, you have Word, you have Excel, you have all these different things that they can use. So um, I made a little video showing them kind of how to go through it. Okay, Cindy, did, or both of you, do you want me to go over the Blackboard stuff? Sure. Is that how we're kind of ending. Why don't we see what people need? So some I've of you seen were questions for a while, and some haven't. So let's see if you have questions, and if you need us to go over Blackboard at all. Yeah, because we basically we were going to start kind of like a broad Blackboard overview, just kind of going over things, and that we thought some of you who are um, kind of um, experienced may find this thing here or there that might be helpful, but most of it you should probably already know. Um, but was there anything that anybody that we've already covered have questions about 
anything still unclear before we just start going into Blackboard? I don't remember if I said this, so I just want to say that um, Holly and Amy and I are um, going to do before the end of this year, <laughs> we are going to schedule trainings for your individual classes. So you'll be hearing from us. Um, we want to, we want you to have access to all of this before you start teaching this spring. Okay. So I'm going to pause my share real quick because I just want to get some other Blackboard pages open of mine. Um, but basically, I wanted to walk you guys through how we set up a Blackboard module and kind of the overall basics of Blackboard. And then I wanted to pull up two of my current courses as an example to kind of show you um, what I'm talking about in real time. Let me just get those ready real quick. Okay. So my stuff is going very slow. Let's see if I can get out. Uh, and it might be, I don't even know, just because I'm running Zoom. Um, this one. Okay. Well, actually, I'll start right here because this happens to me constantly. Okay. So I don't know how many of you, but do you see this little messages icon over here on the left? It drives me crazy. I hate seeing that I have a message waiting, whereas my husband has like 40,000 emails that he hasn't read. I'm like, oh, it says I have an email I haven't read. I need to clear it. Well, that happens to me all the time. And I'm like, so is that from a student or what? And to me, it's not very user friendly. Like it doesn't just tell me, like, as you can see, it starts going into alphabetical order and I have to just go down to fall and see, okay, who sent me a message from which class? Fall 22, child psych and development, I have one unread message. Sometimes I feel like it sends me an email, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes this is the only way that students will reach out to you. Mm -hmm. So I try to, you know, um, stress in my videos and everything for students to reach out for, to me, you know, if they haven't heard from me in 48 hours or something, I had a student that I had no idea sent me a message. So it will show you that here on the left-hand side. Um, you can also set up your information, you know, set up your picture and what pronouns or what information you would want available to other people when they look you up or are you're assigned as their instructor. And of course, courses is the place um, to go. So Child Development Central is a course. So if you star it, it'll be on your favorites menu. And then any current courses should show up here. Now, a lot of weird things happen in Blackboard where <laughs> you're in the middle of teaching a course and it disappears. And all of a sudden it's back in a course from 2022 or you know, sometimes upcoming courses will be ready for you to start with and sometimes they won't. So that's why I'm like, the search bar is nice because if I know, okay, it's parenting and they do PRT, then I know I can search it and, and find um, examples, right? So, um, so let's go ahead and look at Child Development Central. So the first part I wanted, I wanted to start was about setting up your tabs here on the left-hand side. I think you saw with Amy where she was saying, I have a lot of tabs, but the students don't see all of this. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know what the students see and what they don't? You have this edit mode button here on the right hand side. So if I toggle it to off, it's now only going to show me the tabs that any students would see. So all those other ones disappeared and these are the only ones that are available. Now, when you're in edit mode or when you turn edit mode off, you can't do anything, right? It's kind of showing you what it would look like to a student. So if I want to create a new tab, I come over here and, oh, sorry, it went to the wrong one. I click this plus. And if it's, if you just want a content area where you can start, you know, putting in documents and making a learning module, that's where you would start. If you want like a link to grades, you can click here on tool link, and then you have to click on type. So if you want to link to the discussion board, to journals, to groups, to be able to email each other. Um, but my grades is typically one that I put for students and you have to click available and you have to give it a name. So I usually just name it again, my grades. 
once you do that, if you don't make it available to users, it'll always pop down here at the bottom. And if it's unavailable, it has that line through it saying, nope, nobody can see it. If I make it available, show link, that box now should just be empty or it's, it's not empty because, well, so these ones here are empty. And that's what it means is if there's just an empty box there, it's telling you there's nothing in there. Well, I guess it's telling us we have grades. I didn't know that. And then if you're like, oh, I don't want to show that anymore, you can just delete it, right? There's no, um, nothing bad with that. Um, I like these little dividers just to kind of keep them. So they're up here under a uh, divider. So when you add anything, it goes straight down to the bottom. So if you're like, where are my dividers? You probably have three or four down there because you kept clicking it and you just need to move them around. So you just take this here and you know move it where you want to go. Sometimes my computer will not be working with me. And no matter how much you move something, it moves it back to where it was. All you've got to do is come up here and click the reorder button here. And once you do that, you can move something like a divider all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top if you want, or wherever it is that you want it, and then it'll be moved over here on the side. So tabs is where students will go to get important information, right? So you wanna be thoughtful of what tabs am I including? Um, so here is one of my courses, and I'll put edit mode off. So for this course, I have announcements, I have an about me tab, all the weekly modules, major assignments, the OER links, APA resources, my something came up ticket, a link to their grades, Laverne resources. And that's one thing Amy was talking about. I usually have this on every um, class because it gives all these different, you know, individual resources. And then here's what Amy was talking about. She usually just connects people with OIT, but they actually have specific Blackboard help. And I think when you click this, it just opens a new tab for you about help in um, Blackboard. Um, right. So that's why I provide them with the phone number because who's going to go through all this to find <laughs> the answer to their question? Probably not too many students. So I asked my students, this is a new thing that's come up. And I said, what, what do you see when you click on it? They said they don't see anything. So, um, but I guess sometimes if a student purchases a textbook, they're able to see it under Brightwave course materials. So that'll be something we'll keep investigating over time. Um, a different course of mine. I and I just wanted to share something. One of our goals for our program is in the fall of 2023, all of our courses will be um, textbook free. So, so some of us, as you can see, has started using some of the OER resources, but we will do that for you and um, find those resources and, and have that done for you. Right. And there's a there's a question here from Brittany about small groups, small, creating small groups on um, Zoom. No, probably in Blackboard. Yeah. Yes, on Blackboard. Oh, on Blackboard. Okay, yeah. I can go over that. I'll make myself a note here because that that's in the weekly modules, right? That might be an mm -hmm. option in there. Yeah. So right now I have my edit mode off and you saw when I clicked onto this uh, this specific course, it took me directly to weekly modules. How do you set that up? So this customization uh, button, so course management tools here on the left, only we have, students don't see those. Mm -hmm. That's why you know when you're in edit mode and you turn it off and the fact that you still see these means you're not in a true student mode. If you really wanted to see the student mode, you come up here and you click student, enter student preview. Then that should take you to an actual, notice all of those other tabs disappeared, and then you can see exactly what students see. Um, so I'm just going to exit that preview because it's not going to be user friendly for me as an instructor. Um, oh, and it's still gone on the side, which is funny. And now it's back. Okay, so under customization, we have, well, number one, let's look at properties. Here is where you make your course available. So if it's on no and you're ready to open it, you know, a day before you can click on yes. And then usually it has selected dates. So you need to make it continuous. 
Otherwise, it'll close on that selected date. And yeah, I'm surprised it's actually that late in December because usually it closes on that last Sunday of your right. class and you come on Monday, you're like, where is my course? And everybody starts freaking out. Um, so again, just having it continuous makes it so it's not an issue. But I don't know if it happens with anyone else. Sometimes they just randomly close some classes and then you have to contact Blackboard and ask them to be reopened. So again, we're still under the customization here. That was properties to make sure your class is available. Now to choose where they come into your class, you click on teaching style. Again, I don't know exactly why it's labeled that, but here is the entry point. So sometimes I have the announcements be the main page because I want them to read those every time when they come in and then they can go click on weekly modules. This was my class that just started on Monday and we were having a Zoom class on Monday. So I wanted them to go straight to the weekly modules. Down here is where you can select a banner image if you want that to be at the top of your course. And we've just been playing around with this recently of kind of making banner images, but this is one that I made for parenting. I used OER resources to find a free um, picture to include, and you would just click delete this banner if there's one there already that you wanna get rid of, attach it, and then submit it. And I think you guys probably saw that then on your main page, it also makes that banner as your main page, which is nice. Okay, so that was the customization tab. And again, that's important for properties and teaching style. Now, if I go back to our training, what is going on here? Well, Holly's looking for that. We also have course folders. Um, child development course folders for each class you teach. So when you give me updated syllabi and whatnot, they will be uploaded to here. So you you have you you have all of this available to you, and it should have the syllabi, the rubrics, um, and and the assignments under each one. And that just made me think we don't have TK classes in here. So if we're no. going to be sharing that, we need to make some TK classes. Okay, so back to the training again, the customization. I kind of wrote out my instructions here of what I wanted to go over. Okay, so next is the other two under that area. Okay, so here, uh, Grade Center is, of course, going to be really important, right? And there's two, two ways to get there. Sometimes I just click on Needs Grading because I want to see how many things I have to grade. And, and is this a current class of mine? I got stuff to do. Okay, so I have some stuff here that needs to be graded. And again, I've already graded all these. As you can tell, attempts one of five, I graded the fifth <laughs> attempt. So I'm like, this class is done. Why is it showing me? Okay. Um, but anyway, so you can click on needs grading and go from there or the full grade center is set up in the way that you want it. Students don't see this view. So if you spend a lot of time moving things around because you think students are going to see it, they don't see it the way you do. Um, <laughs> we see it, you know, like sometimes I hide certain things like it'll have two total columns. Yeah. I don't need to. So I go to one and, and I click hide from instructor view. Now, if you hide something or don't hide something, but you want to organize, column organization is the way to go. So under manage, column organization, then it lists everything that's in your grade book. And I pretty much do mine by due date just because I have a lot of grading to do. And, you know, like, as you could see here, I had what, like eight or nine groups. I want them all grouped together in my grade book so I can just, you know, keep doing one group after the other. But this is also a nice way to see all your point values, all your due dates, and all your assignments. Because sometimes I'll be like, why are the due date or why are the points not adding up? And there's this extra journal that I forgot to delete or something, right? So this is a great place to, um, again, make sure all the dates, the points, and everything is in the order that you want it. Um, if you did want to reorder something like, ooh, look, these are out of order. This one I didn't move. I would just move it up to here to where I want it. And then you have to click submit to save your changes. And then as you navigate here to the right, those will be in that order. Now, if you're wondering, how does she have that check mark there? That is something that I set up as a, a grading of zero. So when you click on here, you can go to edit column information. 
and I have it set up as complete incomplete. So it's zero points. I just want to know if they do it or not. So if I did a score, it would show everyone's score is zero. And then I get emails from students. Why do I have a score of zero? Well, I wanted a score of zero. So instead I just do complete or incomplete. And then, um, and again, I don't know why it says incomplete because if it's missing, that means it's incomplete, right? Um, oh, well, hold on, Holly. You know, this is, you're so seasoned. Where did you go for that again? So <laughs> on too, any of these- Too fast for me because I don't do this stuff. Any of these columns here, they all have an arrow. Yes. In that arrow, you can get quick column information. Yes, that'll but which one you did that. you click on for that? I specific. clicked on the one that said edit column. Oh, oh, edit. Okay, okay. And that's where, again, if you want to just quickly change your points right there, you can. If you want it to show not only the score, but also what grade they got, you can do that. And it would show two at the same time. Um, usually I just have it show one and none. But And you see, it's under a test. If I really wanted to put it to a different category, I could. I usually don't mess around too much with that. Person. Yeah, I don't do any of this. <laughs> I'm like, that's kind of an extra step that I don't do, but, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you can always create columns, right? Like maybe I have them go to Jamboard and then I need some place to put in five points that they went to Jamboard. So you can just create a column, call it what you want. And then you're prompted for those same, you know, do you want a score? What score would you give it? Do you want a due date? And do you want um, students to be able to see this or not see it? Do you want it in the grade calculation or not? So you have those abilities to kind of play around with a little bit. The other area I was going to show besides grade center was package and utilities. <clears throat> so when it's time for you to copy your course, um, that this is where you'll do it. So if this course was my course that I just finished teaching and I'm going to now teach a new course, I would come to the course that I just completed, click course copy, and then you have to find your course. So automatically it'll say, oh, do you want it in an existing course? Yes. And then I have to find it. And sometimes this can be tricky too. Like mm -hmm. you might think, oh, I'll go to the last page. Well, there is actually all my sandboxes. So that's not helpful. So I kind of look at the dates and I look at the course ID and I kind of try to figure out, you know, cause again, it should say fall 22, spring 22, you know, so I can see classes here ready to go that I could transfer to. Um, then you choose what do you want to take all your content areas, like all your tabs that you have over here. And a new thing that I just learned, and I don't know how long it's been going on, but if you don't click content alignments, it is not going to transfer your stuff over correctly. Mm -hmm. It'll be missing all kinds of stuff. So click content alignments. Again, sometimes I transfer over all my announcements, but then you have to go in and edit each announcement to not show or to show up on a certain date. So sometimes I just do them, you know, in real time. Um, but like, I want my grade center to look the same. I want my group settings, like Brittany was asking about groups. If I set it up one time in this term, I want it the same the next time. I usually also do discussion board. And I don't want a starter post unless I want an example, but usually if it's going to have a, I don't, I don't want any starter posts. I want empty discussions. I usually also do journals. I keep my settings the same and I choose tests. Now, again, you have to look, have I used anything else that usually this is all that I would say people use. And again, announcements may be something. I haven't used a blog in a long time. I think it's just a journal now. I don't even know, but blogs isn't something. And I don't know why you'd have to click calendar if you already have due dates. I don't do calendar either. I don't know, Cindy or Amy, if you guys mm -hmm. do. No. Okay. Then you would submit and you'd get an email saying, hey, this course has been copied. And then you can go to that course and start, you know, setting all your due dates and doing all the fun, fun parts of Blackboard. <clears throat> okay. So let's just look at, um, this one is more of my kind of standard class. Uh, this is a 16 week child psychology and development course. Um, as you can see, I'm in edit modes off. So this week they're gonna be doing a midterm and turning in one of their observations. But if I go to a previous week, I'm in edit, I'm edit mode is off. So when I click on it, it's like a student sees it. They see the description and then they see all of the components. Well, I want you guys to see how 
we set it up. So you have two different tabs here, content information and curriculum resources. Content information is gonna be your settings. It's gonna be your descriptor of what, a summary of what's in the module um, and setting up your availability dates. So here you can see, this is my week eight. Here are my requirements for week eight. You can even add in, you know, if you wanted a link to a anything, you can add it here also in the description. Then you can choose what areas do you want to share with students? Well, I share my instructor area and I share my student learning outcomes. Sometimes I do requirements, but they change a lot. So many times I don't have like a requirements one. And then down here, like I said, so I like to open my modules the Friday before the Monday starts. You don't have to do that. You can open them on Monday, but whatever availability you set is when students are gonna see them. And I don't close them because I always want them to go back in and be able to uh, view resources, uh, videos, right? But my discussions and my journals will have closed. So I'll now go, so now is where you can put in all the content, right? And as you can see, normally I would have no walkthrough walk video this week because it's already week eight and they've been doing it for eight weeks, but something changed this term and I had to walk them through it. So I made a new uh, video, but look, when I go to edit, they can't see that first prompt because I made it unavailable. All right. So I think instead of going over all of the points, let's just show you what's typically in a module. So walkthrough videos, especially if it's an online class is really important. Links to your readings, lectures and PowerPoints. And here's a, a good thing to point out. This week we were talking about abuse and genie. So I always like to point out to students that it could be you know, a triggering, um, topic for them. So I'll put that on with the lecture and with the journal that they do that week. For me, I like to set up quizzes and assessments. Here's the parenting group. So here, here's a good place to start. And let's say I hadn't set up that group yet. Um, we would come to tools and click groups and that's where you'll get started. So it's saying, do you already have groups set up or do you wanna set up groups? So here are my existing groups. But if I just want to, you know, link them to the group page, I can do that. But if you haven't set up groups, there's nothing to link to. So I usually click link to a group and then I either click create. I just uh, click here and click go because I'm going to create a new group. Let's see if it'll do it for me or I just click next. No, not working. Frozen. Great. OK, like I still see this pointer and it's not doing anything. I don't know if you guys can even hear me, but okay. <clears throat> All right, yeah. Does it, I'm, is it because it says select a group type, Polly? Oh, okay. yeah, that okay bar came up and I was like, why couldn't I see that? Okay, so here's where you come down and you select, do you want a single group? Do you want a group set? Well, typically you're gonna want a group set, right? Because you're gonna have multiple groups, unless you just want them all in one single group, which, that's a class discussion. So you don't really need to set that up as a group. You can do manual enroll, self-enroll or random enroll. So usually when I'm setting up a group for the first time, I'll just say, just randomly enroll them into groups. I should be able to click next, oh, select a group. Okay, so it's telling me that I either need to select a group that's already been set or I'm gonna do a new one, links to the group page and click next. So now I'm creating the link to my group. And that's what you have to pay attention to too. This isn't actually the group. I'm creating a link to the group. So maybe I'll even just say here, group link. So we know that this is a link. And down here, I'll put group link. Now, what I can set up here is just availability. And that's what happens with links. So, <clears throat> Uh, let's click submit. And now when I come down here, it's going to give me that link here at the bottom. Now, if I have groups already set up, they're going to be displayed here. If not, I come to create. And that's where you're able to do that same step that I was just showing. So if I want to do random enroll to a new group, 
I'm going to have to create a group name. So I'm just going to say training sample. And here's where you decide what will the groups be able to see. Usually I, you know, they have a group discussion board, a way to email each other. That's usually all that I give them. And sometimes I don't even do the email button. I always allow personalization, that's up to you. And then here's the important part, right? How many students or how many groups do I want? Well, if I know no matter what I'm doing parenting groups and I want three students in each group, then I'm gonna click three. And then I just want you to distribute the remaining members amongst the groups, right? So they will create all groups with three members randomly enrolled. And then if there's any extra students, they're just gonna make a group of four here or there, which they should only be making two groups of four, otherwise you'd have a new group of three, right? So I'm just gonna click cancel because I don't wanna create a new group here. But here is also, so now you can see all of my groups and when I go into those, I can change membership. I can change properties. Um, so yeah, all this is, um, oh, and you see one of my groups has four people. So I probably in the description for them said, hey, you're gonna have four, since your group has four members, one parenting style will be chosen twice. Cause I could see on my end that they were gonna have four um, students in that group. And then you have a little descriptor and then you can always see who's in the group and you can add yourself to each group um, or as the instructor, you can just click into there. Um, but let me just go back to, um, so I don't think we're gonna have time. We should probably end now, but um, this will be able to kind of be covered too in, in your individual trainings of how do we build content? And there's different ways to do that. And we all talk to each other and find out new ways every day. But um, for example, you can just embed YouTube directly in there rather than having a link to YouTube, right? And that's why you see um, that my videos are embedded because in, oh, well, wrong class to choose. Um, but it's just a nicer view for students and everything's kind of displayed there for them. Um, Another thing that I'd recommend too, is if you are creating outside links that you make sure that you've created them to open out, to create, open a new window. Like here, if I click on this OER resource, it should open a new window. And I know that because when I go into here, so this is an item, I created an item so I could just put multiple links on there. When I click on the link and I click on, uh, I write, click on it, and I click on link, it's telling me it's going to open in a new window. The default setting is to open in the current window, which means when a student clicks on it, it takes them out of Blackboard to that document, and then they can't get back in Blackboard. So I always make sure that it opens in a new window um, for that reason. Otherwise, they have to constantly like keep getting back to Blackboard, and that can be tricky. Um, we like to set up, again, whether it's group discussions or journals for the students. Uh, journals are nice because it's displayed directly for them when they click on it. They see it right here and they can click their journal entry. What's not so nice about uh, class discussions is it's not displayed in the same way. So lots of times you'll get students that'll say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Um, and the parenting group is something different, so I'd have to go to a different module. But um, again, we're kind of going over so many things. So I think this will be covered, like you said, more specifically in our courses, right? Do you use tests? Do you, assignments are pretty common. What kind of tools are you using? So over here, I just kind of have, um, oh, that's the last thing I'll show you here. Course tools, which is right here is also kind of your main portal to get to all those main things if you wanted to get to the main page. So if you wanna to get to your discussion board, you click there and it'll take you. So for Child Development Central, we have one discussion board. I didn't even know we had one. Um, and again, I got that from down here. You can go to journals, you can go to safe assign, you can go to date management, which is a whole nother training where you could change all your dates and everything in one nice place. But um, I could go into that on another time. 
All right, so. Um, you can see why I asked Holly all the questions. <laughs> so I'm like, I could literally spend hours just going over <laughs> Blackboard and all that fun stuff. Everyone's eyes are like spinning. <laughs> yeah, basically. Okay, so I'll stop there. Ah, okay, so. Do we want to talk about um, individually connecting with people to do trainings or how do you yeah, want to get into groups and do that? I I'm just going to send some emails out. Um, what I wanted people to do in the chat is if you could is put your desired email and, and phone number if you want, if you could just share that um, because you've sent me emails with three or four different emails and I don't know which one you want me to use. <laughs> so that would be helpful and we'll make up a list. Um, but does anybody have any questions about anything? Jeanette? So um, prior to starting the course, we have access to be able to play around with the system and just really become familiar with it. The first part of your question got cut off. Did you ask for access to Blackboard? Yeah, so how long prior yes. to starting the course will we have access in order to play around with it a little bit? It reminds me of like designing a website. So I'm familiar yeah. with that, but at the same time, definitely playing with it. Is, yeah. is and you will, as soon as you get your um, ID number, Laverne ID number and email from HR, send it to me. And we will get you set up on Blackboard. Even if you're not going to teach a class this spring, we can get you a sandbox, which is what we call it, to play in. Okay, perfect. So and you can play with it. I haven't heard anything from HR. Should we have heard something from HR? Nothing. They are so slow. I think they um, processed Jennifer. Susie, it took them, what, five months? <laughs> Oh my God, it took forever. I remember. So yeah, just, yeah, you should have heard a little something by now, but um, I sent those in what, two weeks ago? So just, just keep informed. Let me know. I'll, okay, I'll reach you. out to HR. Thank you. And to kind of also uh, add to Jeanette's question. So you can create, you can have a sandbox and you yeah. can set up your whole class, all the due dates, everything. And then when your actual real Blackboard is ready and populated with students, you can transfer the entire course over dates and all. And that's one thing that's really nice. Yes. But um, but usually we only kind of do that usually the first time we're creating a course, because then the next time you're just transferring it from an existing course and changing the due dates. So did you want to, I, I'm going to the people that I, I need to train, I'm, I'm going to email them. I don't I know think I'll, I'll do the same. And, okay. and also too, um, I'll put in the chat my email. Maybe we should just ha everyone have our emails too. Um, if you want to reach out to any of us or have any questions like, hey, I haven't been contacted about um, yeah a class, um, but I did want to talk to Victoria if you're available before the end of this, just to uh, chat with you for a minute, if you have a minute. Okay. Also, Brittany popped in here. We didn't get to say hi or get to know who she was. Hi, Brittany. You want to kind of do introductions? Hi. Sorry about that. I, um, I'm Brittany Walsh. Um, I am a preschool special education teacher. So I uh, was teaching. <laughs> I left a little bit early to make it and I teach two courses. I've been teaching them for, I think about four years. Um, the first was a curriculum and strategies for children with special needs. And the second is, um, policies and practices for early childhood special education. Thanks. And Brittany, you wrote those courses, correct? I did. Yeah. Yes. So we really try to get give our course specialists, you know, a chance to bring in your own, your own specialties, which you're really good at. And so, I mean, we will write a course with you and help you. Um, but we have different people teaching different areas for a reason, because you, we all, we all have different expertise. Agreed. 
Are there more questions or? Did you have a question, Susie? No? Just adjusting. <laughs> Amy, will you be reaching out as well as far as like department, like the smaller meetings? Yes, yes. And yeah. you specifically will, we'll connect you with Brittany also, because when we have the special ed class on face-to-face -face on campus, it's different than Brittany because she's been doing it online. Mm -hmm. So there's some nuance that you'd want to adapt to that I, I haven't been privy to. So <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Um, I will Perfect. be the, the connector and help you with like the technical stuff and meet you on camp. We'll meet you guys on campus when it's your class time because you need to know how to log into the computer in the classroom, find the classroom, <laughs> things like that. But um, the technical details, Brittany will know the course content for. Awesome. But I'll definitely be contacting you regarding awesome. that. You guys have anything else? Lena, you have a question? You okay? <laughs> Are you overwhelmed? Are you all overwhelmed? Like, oh, okay, that yeah. was a lot. I know. I and see typically, Zooms, we try to keep to two hours max, right? <laughs> Even with students, it's just, it's a lot. I think I it's really, it's really wonderful to just see all the faces. Mm -hmm. It is nice. You get to, to know it. everybody. I agree. Yeah. It's really nice to see everybody again. But a lot of you are new, so I'm excited about that too. Yeah. And Liz is going to be writing some new courses wow. and we're going to be busy. And what I wanted to say about the special ed, Brittany, that I, I didn't get to say is we're, we're actually going to put that class as one of our core classes. Um, so there will be more opportunities for Vicki to teach Victoria. Do you go by Vicki? Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there'll be more opportunities for Victoria to teach that on campus and then for Brittany to teach it off campus. So we're, there, there'll be some changes in the fall of 2023. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all for coming. It was so nice to see everybody. We'll try to do some more things that are, you know, either in person or and or on Zoom because some of you are a little further away. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be contacting you about trainings for courses. <laughs>